It's Tuesday afternoon and I have just arrived on this charming island called Salt Spring. And I'm going to visit Samantha and Tristan who have built Hemp House Hair Salon here on the island. Island has amazing views from the road. And here we come. Isn't this charming? Me and my wife actually designed it together. She had a lot of help with the how everything was gonna correlate with inside so she could get what she really wanted out of the building because at the end of the day this is like her baby um but yeah no we we did it all on the kitchen table with my daughter when she was there like causing a ruckus the whole time but that was a lot of fun well and i'm curious what inspired you all to build a hemp house for the salon um well we it was really my wife at that point she just finished going to school and she's going through this kind of like turmoil of how wasteful the beauty industry was and she was having a lot of trouble with that and realizing like all of these places are inventing themselves like every few years and throwing everything out at the end of that um so that was really hard for her to see also just there was a lot of people that had really little um recycling mindset behind their salons and so she wanted to take all of that and put it up to the next level and make a building that was also eco-friendly, kind of like specifically all designed with hairdressing and being a salon in mind mm -hmm. so that that was what she could provide for all of her clients and stuff like that. Yeah. And so at this point, she's she's checking off like every single box you can for being eco-friendly, which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll get yeah. you no, in there no, too. No, 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 no. I mean, come on. You probably just had your hair done. No, she, style. Did not. <laughs> she did not. Come back. Come back. <laughs> she did not. Hi, Samantha. I'm Hi. Lilibet. How nice are you? To nice to meet you. Yes. You don't mind. We. So this, um, I was t mentioning Tristan, and I think I mentioned to you on the phone that the USHBA, um, the chairman of the resource, no, on. had asked that I see if I could come and see you all and oh. see your, 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 um, your amazing house and salon. All right. Come yeah. In. Come on in. Hi there, my greeter. Hello. Oh, you brought a ball for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, it smells so nice. Mm. I mean, really lovely. Yeah. Unlike other salons, and that's one thing that keeps yeah. me away. It keeps me away from the gym, yeah. the gyms, and the salons. Yeah, this is amazing. So Tristan was just sharing with me um, the, I guess, the inspiration yeah. that you decided. You know, this is the direction you wanted to have your hair salon go into oh my gosh wait a minute is that the dyson yes everything in here okay is please may i hear it because <laughs> that is that is on my list <laughs> just because it's so quiet yes <laughs> and it's so much better for us i think it's mostly this thing that's really cool um because it's um it's the eco head so it pushes out water at a higher pressure so it uses about like 60 percent less water you can see it has filters all in it and everything but it has like 360 holes in it and so it pushes out the water at a higher pressure and makes me use less water which is awesome yeah and, and then okay. you can see the window here you can see where the concrete is that's right. The you have it on your site. And when, what is yeah. what's the? It's a reveal. You check out the the Instagram page. It's a way more um, in depth. She's saying she's been following it for a while now. Oh, cute! Ryan has and some other people. So when they found out I was in the area. Oh, cool. <laughs> so okay. So hand blowing glass, um, recycled glass, but they're hand blowing, so it's like. Are they local? Is it no? Local? They're from New York. It's from Nice. Um, niche design. 
niche design. Yeah. Have you seen the mushroom? Everything else is local. Have you seen the mushroom um, uh, lamps, shades? No. And the lamps? I met a woman uh, in New York, a young woman, who had started this business. Oh, this cool. was about two or three years ago. It's so cool. All that you can do. So show me, show all the me. sand is local. So um, the plaster on the walls is all local sand and then water and lime. And then in the bathroom, we used uh, honed marble um, for our tiles. All the windowsills are locally fallen, uh, naturally fallen trees. And then the windows themselves are all wood. There's no vinyl inside of them or plastic. And then they have a metal handle. Manufactured in Duncan, everything. Duncan is where? It's just, everything was in, within 100 kilometers, except so for the Duncan is just on Vancouver Island, across from Crofton. So it's the, one of the ferry terminals that you can go to. Okay. Yeah, where you took the ferry through to here? Yeah. That was, that's all right. Duncan is yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Thank you. I Give me... that I can organize it. Oh, you did organize it. Yeah. I appreciate it enormously. Um, all right. So, so all of our stations are all um, naturally fallen trees as well. And then we had them milled and we sanded them all ourselves, but they're all from on island, which is really nice. All the furniture in here is from my old salon. So it's all recycled except for the couch and the stool. Um, and how about the floor? The floor, uh, the floor is just polished, uh, with polished foundation. Polished foundation. But it's foundation, right? This is, what is this called? Uh, just a slab on grade. Where's the foundation? The foundation is the side, the part outside of the foot in the wall. Okay. Yeah. So it's, yeah, polished concrete floor. But it's on the what did you polish it with? Tristan, what did you polish it with? What did you polish it with? Um, they did it with a machine. So they yeah. No, but did you put um, any sort of mineral oil or any? No, this is actually an exterior grade concrete seal that we put on it. And it gives it kind of that like wet look. Um, it protects it from staining because concrete super porous and if any color was to get on it, it would absorb that and hold it forever. And right. this way, if anything gets built on it, it's easy to clean. Plus, it's essentially waterproof, so you can go around here with the mop and all just like bubbles and pools on top. And Whereas typically your concrete wants to absorb that, right? So that was something that we wanted to to have for this space just because it was going to be quite commercialized in that sense. We won't be able to come in here with your shoes on. We don't want to worry about like scratches or anything like that. So yeah. And then I don't know if you saw the roof outside. It's yeah, we'll get, we're going to go look. I'd love to see yeah. it. But this, I was really impressed on your website and you have a quote, you don't have to sacrifice the environment for beauty or sacrifice beauty for the environment. Yeah. I thought that was beautiful. I was very touched. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I really... Um, so what is your pr proudest uh, accomplishment in the construction here and the design? Both of you. Tristan, how about you on the, as, a, as a builder? That's so hard to say. Um, probably just taking on the entire construction aspect by myself and getting through that whole phase without any help. I think that was probably like the biggest challenge and the biggest thing. Yeah, learning, learning how to build it together was yeah. like a lot of work and he took on things that he didn't know how to do. So we just like learned as we went, which was really cool. Um, but I mean, it was a really, it's really cool because it feels like it doesn't have a carbon footprint. So that's my favorite part about it. That we, we made something that we don't have to be all guilty about having. Yeah, it doesn't get in anything that gets adjusted, doesn't go into the landfill. Yeah, well, if it gets torn down, it goes into compost. Yeah. So the whole building can be composted. Um, I really love the roof. Um, my husband and I, we got our roof done seven years ago, and we had leftover pieces, and we said, I told him that we'd save them for the hemp house, and then we did, and then we just started collecting and collecting, and I think it's a really cool little... Uh, thing to do when you know you, a roof could be like twenty five thousand dollars and said it was like two thousand dollars thousand dollars or something like that uh, or just less and he was like eight hundred bucks yeah so very plus his labor obviously I mean the solar panels were like twenty like seventeen thousand but they uh those weren't a part of like the actual roof so with the solar power I mean solar panels what is your electric bill like we um can so we take care of twenty five percent of our bill so we didn't have a bill all summer. Um, we had plus, plus, plus. And so usually our bills are like, and for the whole salon, which is the most amazing part, we got like, last one was $50. So we have a $50 bill. But like, that's the best part. That's, is like, we're actually taking our energy 
from the sun to power the salon. Which yeah, it's is really free. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. And we all need the sun yeah. as energy yeah. anyway, and right? We have the fireplace as well, which is really amazing. Um, what is this? I did. Oh, I didn't yeah, see that. Really and then our brooms as well, like in the other basket, they are all natural made brooms from natural fibers or naturally brushed animals. So our other one that's a Borbrissa one, it's a naturally brushed. It's not like the animal wasn't killed to make the broom. So tell me, okay, so you all use the just biofiber bricks? No, our blocks. We used no, or you did. Stairs, actually, you can see it. From you here. did what? We use hemp shares, yeah, and then the lime binder. You might have to back up one more. If you back up all the way to here, you can see it. Right. Away. Okay. Yeah. So you did cast in place. Yeah. 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 We used. Done uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> we got our product before it was manufactured in Canada, so all of this was shipped from Europe. Yeah. So that was. France or Belgium? France. France. Yeah. yeah. And then we're also building another one down there. Another cabin. Another one of these yeah. salon. Yeah. Or is well, it going to be a guest? It's a tree house for my daughter. Will you adopt me? <laughs> I mean, that is so cute. A tree house made of hemp. Yeah. It's going to be pretty fun. So, um, all right, and where did the lime, uh, is that, was that from France? Did you get your lime from no, France? we just got our lime from the local shop here from Windsor. So I'm not sure where they uh, import it from, but yeah. We just got it from the lumber store. But you had to do the research on what type of lime. Um, okay, he's talking about the other kind. He's talking about the hand lime, which we the didn't get from. The, you're talking about the binder? Yeah. The binder. Um, the binder, we used a two-part system from France, so... With the company we went with, it was like a 50-50 ratio, and that's how they send it. So they send you a bag of shiv and a bag of binder, and it just goes in one-to-one -one ratio. And that was one of the parts that made this product so much better for us to use than any of the other natural buildings because we were able to give the engineers information. We were able to give people statistics and stuff like that so that they could move forward with everything that they needed, which was kind of the challenge for them in so many ways, because you could see that a lot of people didn't have the answers that they needed. And with this system, at least there was information so they could find the ways to get the answers they needed, yeah. Right. I'm sure you've discovered some of this knowing like with hemp and how difficult it is, right? So where did you receive your training? And, and did you, tr who helped you? Because it, it takes a no lot way. of hands. With, we did with just the two with, of, with the construction part, the mixing. Um, well, oh, we I, had a work party. Well, I went, yeah, we had some I work love parties. It. Yeah, we had a work party. So we had a whole bunch of people volunteer. Do you need for filling the walls? Yeah, so we just had a whole bunch of people. We did a volunteer thing, and so we taught them all for free. And then we supplied lunch for them. And then they gave us their time and their energy, and we taught them how to fill the walls. And then at nighttime, when everybody left, my husband would move up the forms and put it all up again. And then everybody would come in the morning, and then we would fill all the forms up, and then we'd have lunch. It was really, really fun. Yeah, so the whole community kind of got to be a part of it, which was really nice. And then we're going to do the same thing with my daughters that we're building. Um, yeah, um, we have people here this weekend helping build it. So, yeah, just like making sure that other people can learn so that they... They want to do the same thing, like you wanting to come here, um, and you not having much time. But I really want to make sure that we're sharing it with people so that yeah. more people do do it, because this is kind of the way the world should be heading with all the global climate change and everything going on. The best thing that we could be doing is growing with hemp for sure, like building with hemp, growing hemp. Everybody. So it's a community. Great. It's like the barn raising, yeah. you know, in certain yeah. groups. Well, he built most of it. We had all different kind of family come over and help him and stuff like that. His dad was a big help, and my dad helped a lot um, with like little things that he would tell them what to, what they needed to do. But basically, he learned how to do the whole thing from never doing anything like this. So you did the wood framing. Yeah. And then the um, how thick. Or the walls? There's right. 15 inches. 15? 13. 13. Oh, 13. Yeah. Okay. Engineer requirement. We wanted 12. They came back at us and said, we'd like 13 for your climate. And we're like, you guys are hilarious, but okay. <laughs> the local, how, how cooperative were the local um, permit, you know, the whole process that you had to go through? What, what was the first step, Tristan? I mean, well, once you all decided, you know, and you designed it, <laughs> we went and we took in our paperwork to the, the local building department here and we handed over everything and the guy flipped through everything and was like, all right, you'll probably have your permit up by Monday. And it was during the week and we're like, no way. And then he goes back through and he's like, what's hemp wall fill? 
and then like, well, we want to build with hemp. He's like, oh, you're going to need an engineer for this, 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 this. And he gave me six engineers that we needed. So then we spent the better part of a year finding the engineers that we needed that were willing to work with us on a project like this. And a lot of people weren't interested. So Why weren't fine. they interested? Um, because they had to learn. Because it's so. outside of their realm. It's something that they don't know. It's like eco-building isn't profitable in that sense for a new company, for a new engineer. Um, one of the engineering firms we worked with gave us a 20% discount on all of their work based on they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> but with that, they would give us questions like, how does that work? Send me a drawing and I'll tell you what I think. And they're supposed to be the like, the professionals, the experts in these areas, but they're literally leaning on you as the builder to have a proper idea of how it's supposed to work. Like simple things like how to tie in your vapor barrier to your wall from your ceiling, right? So then they're like, we don't know how you're gonna do that. Give us an example. They wanted a drawing. They wanted a drawing for how the window flashing was gonna work over the windows. They wanted all kinds of details that were like, should have been fairly simple and should have just been like cut and dry, but yeah. So that was, that was interesting. And then from that point, after we got all the engineers on board, we were able to start building you know, and once we had everybody on board it was it was really simple because we would have accomplished to whatever level we needed to accomplish to to have an inspection and because we had all these engineers on board the local building department would come by we'd hand them the three signed documents from the engineers and they'd say have a nice day and they wouldn't look at anything they didn't care they didn't want to look it didn't matter once there was an engineer that had said it was good so that was also like they were on our side 100% at that point, and we wanted like one little detail that was kind of tricky. We wanted to have the stone be continuous from outside to inside, so that's actually one piece of stone under the door there, um, just so that it was really great and easy easement for people in a wheelchair or for older people and stuff like that. Yeah, and then our, they made me put a piece of metal over top of it. Yeah, <laughs> but them all, where they were so easy to work with us and all of that, just like quick right. emails back and forth. If you think it's going to work, how's it going to work? And yeah, so. So when did you all start the project? How long ago was it? <laughs> 2014, 2013. Yeah. You were real you pioneers. Were well, Samantha, you all were real pioneers then. Yeah. Because was that a, was in the U.S., just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird thing that, um, that we chose to do. I think it was crazy. It was definitely crazy. But then we had a baby, so everything got slowed down. But yeah. When, all right, so... What other materials, natural materials, that were um, you were interested in, and well, we why did you go well, into hemp? The or, building was called the Cost Law to begin with, um, but um, hemp is way better for the environment. Like Cobb has tons of issues: mold, rodents, um, like just like, needs a lot of work. Whereas hemp is like you know rodent resistant, earthquake almost proof, fire proof almost. Um, there's like a million different things about it. And then also that it is like a carbon sink. So it, it kind of just spoke to us um, yeah. being better for the environment and making the building itself actually like have no carbon footprint. Whereas Cobb, um, we would have needed a whole bunch of more engineers and then we would have had to have like engineers for this wall and that wall and they would have to figure out how they're going to put it together. It just became too complicated as well because um, we we're going to do both. We we're going to do hemp and Cobb. And then it just became like, we we're going to have to have two different work parties. And it was just like a lot of work. Your friends wouldn't have mind. <laughs> um, so how did you, okay. So that makes a lot of sense because we all should be looking in that direction with yeah. regards to the carbon sequestering. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully they, the farmers will learn that how valuable it is to the land and to the future and and and, and to the present time right now with sure. uh, um to grow hemp um not cbd hemp but you know the industrial hemp well, and especially in that scale like the oxygen production is like sevenfold i'm pretty sure over a hectare of natural forest so a hectare of cannabis production will produce seven times the oxygen that a forest will produce. So if that's something that we're in need of right now, then these are great ways for us to turn and to produce. And especially when we're thinking we're cutting down forests to make these things and we're spinning up insulation from fiberglass, which is not the greatest either. Yeah, I don't understand why people, when they realize how much plastic they're living in, 
you know, yeah. why they would even, I mean, all, look at all the allergies and all the health issues, you know, in my country and I'm sure in Canada as well. And if people just stopped and thought about it, where do I spend so much of my time inside? Mm -hmm. And maybe off gassing and no is affecting. This building. Yeah. Yeah. So we used um, actually a chalk paint, uh, a milk paint. A milk paint, a milk wasn't paint. it? Yeah. It's been around yeah. so yeah. long. Yeah. So we used that for all the painting in here instead of using some off gassing crappy paint. Um, and it looks like really nice, I think. I think it's beautiful. When did you finish? We finished two and a half years ago. So we finished August uh, 20. 2018. So from the beginning, it was um, it took about us five three, years to build. Five it. years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five years to build it. There was a year of just trying to get engineers on board. From once we had our drawings, once we were like, "This is what we're doing," right? And we were excited and had our excavator come. <laughs> Well, before we had all the engineers here. So we had this. You hole. were jumping. Yeah, we had this hole in the yard yeah. for the better part of a year that just sat there, you know, floor. daunting us, knowing that there was this project waiting for us soon. <laughs> Did you put prayer flags all around it? No. Before, you know, well, we yeah. before I had the breast feed. So I was really busy. It was intense. Yeah. It was a crazy thing. And then we had two weddings at the same time. So we, uh, we were very busy planning. Um, because we were waiting for the excavators, we just thought the wind will just get married and, and move on with other things, and then we could do that after. Yeah, it was a lot of stress. <laughs> well, look how, how beautiful it turned out. Yeah, you know, it's really for nice. all both of you. So, do you, th you must feel very good that you've um, educated the engineers that you worked with. Yeah, that was I really mean, a nice treat. Yeah, yeah. Well, that and I really hope nice. that they're going to do go forward and maybe encourage others. Um, yeah, definitely. To follow. I feel like that is a big aspect of like being on the forefront of a new product or trying to like push things in a new direction in so many ways mm -hmm. is that each step, each time it's done, it becomes that little bit easier. There becomes some information that people can lean on, they can look at, can reference, and that can help everybody move forward with what actually needs to be done. Like I still would offer to our um envelope engineer to come and talk to us about why they wanted a 13 inch wall and to put an actual R value on what this is because I think it's way above what they calculated it as and that's just a lack of knowledge at this point right like to think that that's only getting you to um, an R20 or what have you for a wall value at 13 inches thick I think that that's probably double in my opinion you hmm. think about a building then in Kelowna how big of a wall are you looking at? Two and a half feet thick? Like no one's ever gonna build with hemp if that's what we're asking for. Sure, it would be cool, but those things start to become the I problem love to have and the issues. Like, you have a big window so I'm a little better. But cost effectively, <laughs> it would be, you know what I mean? Like for it to be actually like replace insulation and drywall and all those other factors in the future, then we need to get our information really concise and actual. So when you, okay, you, you constructed the envelope, the hemp yeah. envelope, hempcrete envelope, then you allowed a time of, to dry, yeah. and then what about the plastering? Oh. Yeah, we plastered the inside first um, because it was at the beginning of summer and we knew that we could still have the exterior be drying throughout yeah. the summer. Uh, so we plastered the inside at like... I think 70% moisture or was gone, so we were down. So you had the... Um, we were, so we were down at like 30% moisture. You could so measure it. You had bought yeah, those yeah. measures. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, we were checking it quite regularly to see where we were at. So once we were at about 30% moisture in the wall, we plastered the inside and then left the outside till we were... I think we were below 15 or around 15 when we plastered the outside, which is all within the realm of like, okay, anything under 18 is safe. Is safe. Yeah. How many layers inside? Um, Three. Yeah. Three. And it was it. Just, was it with sand? Yeah. yeah with just sand and lime. Yeah. Sand and lime. Local thing. Yeah. Oh. No color. We didn't put any pigment in there. Just natural color. Really? Yeah. This is the color of, of the sand. sand. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It, it looks. You know. It almost looks like. It, it looks like. Um, Castle. Yeah. <laughs> but it when you 
you want to touch it. It's yeah. very appealing to go and touch. It, um, it No, it looks like suede almost. Yeah. You know? yeah. It has a very sensuous feel to it. It's very zen building. Very zen, yeah. yes, dear. It's very zen. Um, okay, so you did that. I love that you put the, um, you have the um, wonderful skylight there. And the lighting. All the lighting is... Um, well, I'm outside of your beautiful chandelier. Yeah, um, well, the pendant lights are just, uh, they're Spoolhouse design. Um, just, I mean, we want to go with a more industrial kind of look. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what those are, and then I think that they look really pretty handy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other ones, I just wanted the maximum amount of light, and then I want to be able to move it to point to wherever I'm going to. Our toilet paper roll is really cool too. That was made by a local designer. And it's just local metal that he had laying around. And then he made a beautiful toilet paper roll with me, which I just love. And uh, is your are your shower heads the ones that are on, on uh, sensors, timers? Have yes. you seen those yet? Because I was just told about them two, yes, no, not two not days ago. No, not that. No, uh, they, 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 they missed in between. They, they deliver the water, and then within a few seconds, it's time so that they have a mist, so you can shampoo, and then the... Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I know. I thought, that I'll find out the information and send it to you. Cool. You never know. Yeah, very cool. Right? Um, let's see. Everything. So, I want to touch this. It's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. So, what's the reaction of your... Uh, your customers, once you, when did you open your doors to? Two and a half years ago inside here. And did you have um, just a, a reveal party? No, actually I didn't ever, I still haven't. I never have gotten around to it. <laughs> um, so and it's, it's, we don't take new clients, so um, not everybody gets to see it, but we have another girl that's just started and so now more people get to see it. And we have an online shop, so people um, use the shopping, but it is a more private, um, kind of yeah. salon it's a private also just because the pandemic happened and everything like yeah. that um so we keep it really um to locals and things like that um mostly i have a couple people that come from off island and some people that come from back river and they say something and the eco tour was probably the open oh yeah ones. i guess i had an eco tour um on the eco tour they do a salt spring eco tour and we had like we had to tell people to stop coming down the driveway there was too many people coming to see it so we kind of had like an opening party that day and everybody got to come from the community and come in and look at everything and tristan was here to answer any questions and and i was here to answer any questions and yeah that was a nice day but no we haven't had that opportunity yet it's just so beautiful <gasps> Tell me about the, the tree I took down. Yes. We took all by ourselves when our baby was sleeping. <laughs> um, well, this is the only tree that was taken down um, for the salon um, that wasn't naturally fallen. We did take this one down, but we wanted it to be a centerpiece, um, you know, to like kind of feature trees <laughs> and everything like that. And yeah, it's just. Probably the most beautiful thing. That was my idea too, obviously. Um, what species? Okay. What is the species of? It's cedar. It's a cedar. cedar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the big part with this is that we wanted to kind of make the tree kind of bring down the light from the skylight. So this was part of this design aspect was having a space with a skylight above it, bringing down the light over the tree and having this moment of just like feeling what is given and what is taken for buildings to be created. And yes. Yeah. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. At one point. Very artistic. We had talked about turning it into a ladder to get into the second floor, but once it was in place, we couldn't touch it. We're like, we like it too much. <laughs> yeah, I it guess. became a sacred. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. won't even touch the nubbins or anything like that. <laughs> like they all, yeah, they all just have this character to it that uh, yeah, it's really neat. It is. It is. A we had a friend come who was a tree faller, and we had drawn some lines on the tree of roughly what should be the angle for the floor. And that was one cut, and then we brought it in with a crane, and it sat on the floor just like that. And we're like, okay, perfect, we're done. It decided where it, it wanted was, to be it was, yeah, placed. It was almost magic how well it worked out, because typically that could take three or four times before you'd get that close to the ground and that accurate. So it was really cool. All of our stations are all hidden cupboards, so everything's hidden. 
that since it's also nice so that they don't feel like you said zen in here uh, when everything's hidden it's behind. It's very clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really nice. I just have everything nice and, nice and tucked there. away. And then the mirrors are all on the back of the things so you don't have to look for them. And that too. This is pretty. Mm -hmm. Your electrical closet is probably something to note for building in the future and how people are doing it. Just this with the that's yeah. where your system is yeah we tried yeah. to give as much space for the electricians so that they could feel like they had somewhere to work at the point in time of like finishing their job with all the wires being buried in the wall because we're on solar and we're also tied into the grid mm -hmm. so and then my husband made this all the doors um so they're all nice beautiful big wood doors and it looks like you have some Gavinus. amazing products. Yeah, we're, we, we showcased Gavinus um, and a little bit of Kevin Murphy and some Eleven Australia. Um, but yeah, Gavinus is our main focus. They, uh, they're they a pretty uh, good company. They are a B Corp company. Um, and they're trying their best in their food grade plastic and kind of prescription line and then compostable packaging. They're just, they're a little bit more... Um, aligned with the the salons kind of theme lifestyle and, and, and theme for sure theme <laughs> yeah for yeah. sure where and where are they located in uh, australia in italy. where italy in italy yeah kevin murphy and uh 11 are australian but this one is italy and europe has a higher standard for um product making and organic and natural um they don't use any pesticides or anything like that so they're yeah it's just a better the, I noticed also on your website, you had talked about the training or educating rather your customers that come to <laughs> Well, I'm just a big mouth about everything like that. No, no but um, I meant with, I think you're... you're <laughs> I have a hard time not explaining things to people because I feel like that's how I learned all my stuff is just by listening to other people talk. And so until you, um, you know, when people are in here, they kind of want to understand why or whatever. And so it gives me a little bit more of an opportunity rather than just being over drinks with somebody and being like, you know, they don't recycle everything that you put at the recycling depot. Um, so we use Green Circle to recycle everything in the salon. We recycle the hair, the foils, all of the tubes, any aerosol cans, any bottles, anything like that. Um, the hair goes to oil spill cleanup, which is really amazing. And um, all the color left in the bowls, we have, we also like, um, they take away and they incinerate and they take out all the water out of it and then it goes back to the waterways and um, they incinerate all the waste that's left in it. Foil, nice. how does yeah. that get recycled? They take everything. So they incinerate yeah. things and then they use um, the power from the incineration to power the building. Um, and then they recycle it in whatever way that they do. I don't know. That's why we send it there is because they actually recycle Where do you send it again? To Green Circle. Green Circle Salons, it's called. And where is it located? It's There's one in Vancouver. There's one in Calgary. There's one in Toronto. Yeah. I'm sure there's one in Winnipeg now. Yeah, they're becoming Canada-wide. Yeah, they're in the U.S. too. They're a great program mm -hmm. where literally they'll send you a box and you fill it with all of your different recyclable products. They have to be separated, but you can have your recyclable plastics, your cardboards, your tin foil. Like she and said, has to be rinsed out the, um, all of the color will all go into this box oh, and we'll, they'll come and pick it up here and then take, it to, and take it to their headquarters. And at that point, they'll go through everything and go through the proper property. ways of going and re recycling all of that as best as they can. And how do you verify that they're not greenwashing? I'm just getting it's, it's my, one of my best yeah. friends, you know, there, and right. she helped, uh, not one of my best friends, one of my very good friends, uh, this girl that I respect a lot in the green business. Um, and she came to help build this. And I truly believe that if it was that she would tell me, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, um, I know that they use the, the hair for oil spills because they use them in the Vancouver oil, um, spill that happened. And so green circle was a big part of helping with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope that they do. I definitely, for the amount of money I pay for them to do it, they better be doing it. But they are definitely waste warriors. Like, it's a it's a big company that they have yeah. invented to do this. And as a commercial company, we can't take our commercial recycling to our local recycling. Yeah. So if I was to go there with a million Davinus bottles, they would know that it was me. And I'm now going to a public recycling place with my commercial recycling. And that's also where it becomes a little bit challenging and these guys have provided a great outlet is it just gives you that like cut and dry you're going to the proper recycling 
location, the proper recycling service for what we're trying to do. And yeah, yeah. they're they a really nice company Thanks. from everything that I've had to deal with them through and through. We've had to talk to them to get our statistics for how much we've recycled up to date um, in the last month, in the last year for different, um, what, what would you call it, competitions or? Well, for different like awards that I've won. For different like awards that we've applied for, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that, to do, it seems like they run a pretty good business here. Awards that we won, I didn't apply for them. <laughs> I didn't apply for them. I, they wanted to know how much waste um, that I had made and so that they could give me back things. The VIG green um, form that you fill out to prove all the things that you've done because you have to prove um, to win um, all the points. You have to get a certain amount of points. And so I'm we're the highest um, business in their points system. So Bravo. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. Samantha's got one more point, and then she gets 100 out of 100. And she's no, two more points. Two more points. And but then it's carbon offsetting, and I don't believe in our carbon offsetting because they say this with big companies, and they are basically leading them to believe that they can offset the carbon they make, and that is not true. If you're making and making a whole bunch of shit stuff, then you are making problems, and so you can't just go and plant a tree and pretend like you didn't do that. And so I get a little bit upset with... Um, that even being a point because it's not real and it's setting up companies to believe that they can make as much mess as they want, mm -hmm. but they don't have to take ownership for it because they've planted a tree. Yeah. Well, that isn't, that isn't how it works. Actually, you've still made the mess and you can never offset that. You've already done it. Um, so when they are, yeah, I, that's the one thing that I have a big problem with, with even yeah. B Corp company, because it's a big thing offsetting and that's just basically paying for somebody else to plant trees, which is a beautiful thing to do, but you're not offsetting what you've created. You never are. And so that's why we built it out of hemp is because we really are offsetting. And this building is timeless. When people decorate, they need to think about being timeless and not just whatever's in style right now, because this building's never gonna have to be redecorated or taken down and redone in a way because it's timeless, it's forever. This looks beautiful forever. There's nothing that needs to be changed. And people, when they make businesses nowadays, they don't think about those things. They'll just create something and be like, oh, well, we can change it in 10 years. Oh, just do that for now. Instead of thinking about the forever of the building. Like this will be beautiful for 500 years, you know, instead of 10 years and then redone, which is gross. I'm so happy to see that you all are young and you're thinking about this. I really, I mean, when I travel around, especially in Europe, that's what they've been thinking about. You see buildings been up there for hundreds forever, of years. Forever, and they're beautiful, they're timeless. And they're gorgeous. Yes, timeless. They're, I love that. Good expression. Good, good. They are timeless. You're a little, you're not too passionate about this subject, are you? <laughs> It's definitely one of those things that becomes a little frustrating when you see the whole like Canadian hurdle over an American hurdle over building with hemp and then you go and you look at this European market and it's like, wait, 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 we've been doing this for thousands of years. There's nothing wrong with it. Here, look, look, we've been doing it. And they're like, oh, no, let's not steer away from our polluting, creating, job creating, money grabbing system that we already all love. Like, it's, yeah, it's like yeah. a catch-22 at this point. I feel yeah, like. so what do you think... Uh, we need more p couples like yourself, individuals that can, you know, think forward and think long term yeah. and, and think for the next generations. So what is it going to take? I mean, we have all these these disruptive climate crises, um, especially where I am right here visiting. It's going to take just people making their own choices. I think yeah. the government and everybody is conning everybody into believing that you need to consume to be happy and to do all of these things. So people need to just like break away from that and stop with the whole like just needing to be like everybody else and needing to look a certain way and needing to be a certain way. I think we all just need to like start focusing on what's really important and what matters and, and like it's you know the children and like the adults and the grandparents and all the people that are actually existing instead of like the I need, I need and I want to watch and I want to watch TV and want to buy and Teslas and blah, 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 because even that's an issue because they aren't actually good for the environment. Um, but yeah, like there's, there's just so much misinformation. So just trying to like stay true to like earth, I think, you know, and like thinking about what makes sense. I mean, I don't think that drywall and glue and plastic makes sense for a home that you're going to live in. It's, you know, you really have to think about, and then also if you were building out a hemp everywhere, 
the fires that are going on in California, the houses wouldn't be all burning down. Like it would be a whole different if they had hemp. Oh my God. Anyway. Okay. Yes. No, I agree. I totally. It wouldn't be happening. I mean, all these houses wouldn't be burning down and then there wouldn't be this off gassing of disgusting houses that are burning down. It would be so much different. It would be so much different. And they could use like maybe the house would burn and stuff like that, but they could redo it. They'd have to put in new windows, new plaster and it'd be back up. Yeah. yeah. I hope you are running for office locally. <laughs> <laughs> You're really a good, a great positive disruptor. Yeah. That's you no, know, you really are. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you're. Uh, we need, <laughs> we need people like individuals <laughs> like yourself that are passionate and speak out. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, 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 when I talk to people, um, young people, the ones who are who are not on the front line, yelling and screaming, and and trying to make changes, they're so disheartened. You know, and it's you all with your little one, and um, this it makes you feel good that you're doing something. Yeah. And everyone can do something, to, and you know, even if it's one or yeah. two things. No, it's super important. And just start small. Like I started small. You know, it's the first thing I don't. I haven't bought in a plastic water bottle in ten years, like mm -hmm. maybe even eleven years. Like I've never, and I will be out, and I'll be thirsty, and I won't even buy one. Like I'm like, no, I will wait till I get home. Doesn't matter how thirsty I am. Because that is like something that we can prevent. We do not have to buy a plastic water bottle, you know, and drink a water that's like then thrown away. That's one of the biggest small changes I made. Quitting smoking also was another big one. Well, because I was smoking and I never really would have thought about how wasteful a butt is. And now when I see one, I'm like, oh my God. Um, but, you know, quitting smoking, just thinking about the things that you can do just to start so that your body is moving in the right direction. Those are like two very simple things. Maybe not the smoke, quitting smoking. But for me, quitting <laughs> smoking was easy um, because... I, yeah, anyway, but you know, those are things yeah. that you can do yeah. like that are important. Picking your cleaning detergent, quit buying like the things that say, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's like really look into it. Vinyl oxide is amazing. It's safe for waterways, pets, children, animals. And what is, what is again? It's called vital oxide. That's what we use to clean in here. Um, and it's like a, it's like a peroxide cleaner, like air, hydrogen cleaner. Hydrogen cleaner. Um, and so it kills COVID, AIDS, hepatitis, all the different kinds of diseases that are out right now, but it's safe for the pets and waterways. And so that's what we use to disinfect everything. And so we have a fogger that we fog in here. Um, and so anything that's been touched, it's um, it's by the just the mist landing on it, it's killed and cleaned. Um, and it's not harmful or anything. And it's not like a big chemical. It doesn't smell at all. So, yeah. I mean, we need to start thinking about what we're using to clean as well. And so can you recommend... And, um uh, let's see, some websites for people to do more research on, I mean, it sounds like you all have done extensive research over I'll a period of time. I'll send you a link. Um, Will you please? That, be that would yeah. be, yeah, that would be great because I, I'm trying to share as much as possible. Yeah, there's this one website where you can go and you can punch in anything and it'll tell you everything that's in it. Um, I mean, it's hard sometimes for people because they often don't know. It's not an environmental working group, is it? It might be. Uh, I do too. Uh, They've been out for a while. They have the three, um, um, they put out, I mean, especially when it comes to food, yeah. you know, and anything and, and chemicals and you know, things for our face. And, yeah. But yeah, I think it sounds like the environmental working group and they rank them. Yes. Yes. That, yeah, um, yeah. That, so Tristan, as a builder, give me, give us some hope and, and <laughs> encouragement and encouragement. You know, I mean, what, it, you it know. It all comes down to the clients, really, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It comes down to the individuals. And if we can get, I, I guess, really what it would come down to is enough advertising so that new people, new homeowners, young generations can actually learn about these products because coming from a city standpoint coming from that that world you might not even think or understand that there's anything wrong with the way that we're living yeah because nothing's <laughs> been taught to us nobody's ever said that this is a green building what is a green building by the time i finished high school i had no idea in construction in carpentry school they never talked about green buildings never. they talked about like passive solar allowing more light in they talked about big overhangs to protect your siding so that your building would last longer, but we didn't talk about like using new products that could be better. So I think a lot of it just comes to, down to like always educating the consumer because the supplier will change, the builders will change if the consumer wants change. 
the consumer never asks for change, then well, how so the millionaires and the billionaires that just want a house built for four hundred square are, feet? But those are the but that's like, what I mean. The consumer at that point, yeah. But no, they want it built for cheap. They don't want to. They don't care about the environment. They want it built right. nice and cheap, or they want to spend money, but they want marble but, and this, that, and other. In today's world, with the hike of building lumber and everything like that, getting away from so many bits and pieces of lumber that were required for our building, like we didn't have any structural sheeting, no exterior plywood. Um, eliminating that in itself, depending on the building, is like 50 to 100 sheets of plywood that weren't used. Ew. And that's all glued together plywood, which so getting away from that in itself in hemp is like a great first See, step. See, we both have two different views on yeah. it too. I like I'm more on the beauty side, he's more on the building side, and we're like trying and to showcase it. Go ahead, sorry. sorry I just wanna finish, because it's like, um, I'm just trying right. to get to like the financial aspect of it, which is where I was going with that, but just that, you're, you can save a lot of money, and especially now that hemp's being manufactured in Alberta, the cost difference on our building is like a quarter of the cost that we paid. So if we were to redo this building, the hemp cost would be 75% less now that it's manufactured in Canada. So that in itself has got to say something to all these people that there is this product out there. It is becoming cheaper. We just need to start utilizing it. Um, the company is actually called E... WG Skin Deep Cosmetic Database. It's ewg.org. Cool. Environmental Working Group. Yeah. And they have skin the, deep yeah. the one that I use. Skin Deep. Okay. Because yeah. they, they rank uh, the Dirty Dozen. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. a great group. Yeah. Cool. Great organization. Mm -hmm. No, they, they've been around for a while and they're very solid mm -hmm. and very trustworthy, mm -hmm. which is important. Um,